Hi, everybody. Good to see you guys. Let's get everybody in. Dr. Rodriguez. Yes, ma'am. There I am. Glad to see you. Hello, there, people. Uh, the thing is, is uh, with this uh, social study stuff, I mean, I can create a lesson plan, but the, the, the seesaw and all those, we're not, I'm not used to friendly with the computer. <laughs> I'm, ha I'm having the hardest time to recognize how this actually works. Okay, well then, um, why don't you talk to me after and I'll help you get going on that. We should have talked about it last week, really, so you could have been ready. But okay. You'll, you'll kind of see what my plan is, and so you'll have time to get it, and so we'll, we'll visit after, okay? So we'll, we, have a, we have something we can do there. Okay, okay, that sounds so good. If you still have questions or if you've had issues. What, I mean, I did hear what from was Rosa Rosa talking about? There, she's talking about her social studies presentation. Oh, okay, okay. That she was having problems doing the lesson part. So, it's needing. I'll, I'm going to talk to you in a little bit about how that's going to work and how we're going to review. You'll see if it's not quite done, there'll be something that you can do about it afterwards. Hope you guys are doing well, guys. As you're coming in, before we start together in the chat box. I want you to put what um, technology tool did you use for that lesson plan and that social studies presentation? So um, it, assuming that it's and posted and ready to share, just put in the chat box, share deck. did you do a PowerPoint with some questions? And I just wanna see the different, um, and this is also your sign in, good, thank you. Are you talking about when we, our presentation with the group? No, the one that's tonight that you did all by yourself, the, so, the second one, the social studies presentation. The second one. Okay, okay, well, we'll talk about it. If there are some issues that any of you are having with the technology, then we can have some time to talk about it. Dogs are getting mad at each other right now. Let me get my dog out of here real quick. Sorry. Okay. So yeah, as you're coming in, if you can please put your, um, what did you use for your social studies lesson like presentation to what um, technology tool did you do for your lesson? Okay. And I want to just see um, a lot, I, good, Nearpod, Pear Deck. Yeah, I just wanted to see the different uh, tools that you had accessed. And so I've heard from a couple of you that had problems. And so we can talk about that actually um, after I finish up my lecture part of the class and we'll have time for questions. And so, um, like I said, we'll make a plan if some of you still needed some more time. and actually have a few, then you can work together on the part that we're going to do. Okay. So I hope you guys are doing well. Give me just a second. Actually, we're going to start with our writer's workshop. And so I sent you a reminder earlier about having yours posted into your digital um, writer's journal. And so that's going to be our first discussion. Remember working through last week did that brainstorming. So now you should have a draft and we're going to talk through that in just a few minutes. Okay, so I'll give a couple more minutes. Anybody want to jump in with the question before we start? Um, would we have the opportunity to put, I had some issues with my presentation and it kind of went over my head that the it was due today and I'm so sorry. Um, is it possible to present in another class? Yeah, you know, I think that there's probably a couple of you in that same boat. So let's start with writer's workshop and then I'm going to talk to you about my plan for review and you'll okay. have time to get that up there and then figure and then get it reviewed. So we'll talk about how that will work for those of you. I mean, I do want you to get it done and you know, the you, actually I was messing up on our schedule that we act uh, next week is actually the last week of class, not two more weeks. And so it's really coming down to finishing everything up. So with that being said, you know, it would need to be done over the next couple of days so that it could still have time to be reviewed, which is our, the step that we're doing tonight. 
So we'll make sure that you're um, understanding exactly how to proceed forward or if there's little tweaks that need to be made to it and then figure out how we will communicate that it's ready to be reviewed after. Uh, and the video from last uh, time that we met uh, wasn't working at all. I was trying to view it so I can uh, hear again what we were supposed to do and it wouldn't come up. So. If okay. I, I well, just, um, you guys need to tell me because it is working. I ha And actually, I just saw that like earlier today and I thought, I guess nobody needed that because I never heard anybody say it's just the way that sometimes Canvas doesn't transfer the YouTube video. And so if you had just shot me a text, I very easily could have made, done that correction. I just didn't realize that it had messed up in the transfer. So I'll make a note and put that up there, but really we'll, we'll get your questions answered by the time we finish up tonight, but you'll be able to go back and review it. It is, I mean, the recording is fine. I don't know why it didn't transfer on there, but I did just see earlier today that that had happened. So I just need to redo it on Canvas. Okay, but I didn't hear from anybody needing that. So I never, I never did go back and check. Okay, guys, so we're going to pull it together. So we have a few things that should be done, but aren't done. It's okay. We move forward and we'll figure it out. And that's what we're going to do. And that um, that's one of the reasons last week, and I did hear from some of you during class time about clarifying how to do some of these things. And that was the purpose of the work week. So, you know, it's to get to this point without with still having questions. It really makes it seem like that means last week you didn't get onto Canvas at all to check and see what needed to be done. I was actually sitting at my computer this time last week just waiting for questions. <clears throat> okay, so let's move forward and um, you know make sure that we're all in a good place so that we feel good and we can get everything that we need together between now and next week, which is our last class. It's hard to believe and really it caught me off guard because yes, we are finishing this semester one week earlier because we started a week earlier or later and didn't have spring break or something like that. So that's why. Okay, so guys, let me, what I'm gonna do with you is talk first about Writer's Workshop. I hope you have your drafts ready to talk about and to share. That was one piece to, that we were talking about over your work week to have complete. Um, so I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about that and give you some time to review those before we talk, but go back into our presentations. So even if you're, you know, still have some questions about that, let's kind of table it and come back to that after our Writer's Workshop. So I do have a module for tonight. I haven't made it available yet, just so I can share my stuff with you before you're looking ahead, because some of it is going into the social studies work that we're gonna be doing. But for right now, I'll go ahead and share my screen and go over to the presentation that, like I said, you'll be able to access this in just a little bit. But right, really, it's just giving us a little guidance for what we're gonna be doing with our writer's workshop. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna do, you know, you're remembering way back our purpose, you, our, the how I talked about ways that we're covering writing. You did the whole work with our author of our text and had some time to engage with the author and understand how the book works. We did that writing analysis and for your checkpoint too. And, you know, we've got that posted and that nice review of how to analyze writing samples using a rubric. And now, and last week, we barely finally got to go into what I was wanting to do as a conclusion to all of that discussion around writing was just having an opportunity to actually engage in a little, a little round of writers workshop. And so that's what we started last week or two weeks ago when you um, did that little brainstorming with your in your writers workshop groups. And that is the first step of the writers process is doing some brainstorming and we talked about how our textbook for our class gives us a lot of ideas of how to engage our students in writer's workshop in each piece of the writing process. And so keeping in mind, you know, the way that we're using that book and how it can help us when we say, you know, we're going to have those students that say, okay, it's time to brainstorm. So what am I going to write about? I don't know how to get ideas. And so it's getting into our textbook, looking at ways to generate, generate ideas and um, doing those mini lessons around that. And so that all fits into the brainstorming piece, the brainstorming component of the writing process of the, and that's what you do in the writer's workshop. 
So what I posted for today is, and there's a ton of them. I mean, just looking through your different teacher resources, websites, you're going to find a lot on the writing process and how to then use that in writer's workshop. So I just pulled, oops, I just pulled from one that um, you want to show us real quick because that's going to, you know, what my hope is, is that you're pulling out these uh, PowerPoints or the different resources, including our Google Drive folder, and you're gathering those things together um, in one place, whether it's your binder to, for your certification test that we put together very much earlier, you know, but considering each of these resources, including this, um, this little Google Slides that I'm sharing with you and the resources that I'm putting in there as well. So that little link takes us over to this, oh, I got a fly like right in my face. Um, oh, this writing process step-by-step -step website that I really liked and I explored a few different ones. And so the reason that I wanted you to have a nice little consolidated resource is because we are you know, doing a quick run through the writers, the writing process and this little simulation and writers workshop. Obviously, each component would take a lot longer than one week or two weeks or whatever we're doing with in our class. And so you're, you're basically just getting your feet wet when it comes to practicing writers workshop and how the writing process works. And that, you know, really aligns with what you saw in the summer camp with our author of our book. But I, you know, you need to have a more in-depth understanding in order to be able to fully implement it in your class. So reaching out and looking at what resources we have along with the experiences that you've had, and hopefully that gives you a good understanding what we're talking about here with the writing process. And so, you know, just a quick review of what this resource includes. It's just a nice overview of really helping you to see what the purpose is of writing process. And just like we talked about a few weeks ago when we did the writing analysis, you know that we're writing for a lot of different purposes in our class and our students need to know that. And write, doing engaging in the writing process and writer's workshop is a time when we get our students are able to say, okay, I don't have to worry about my punctuation being graded. Oh, she's not gonna worry about my capital letters. All that she's worried about is me being able to develop as a writer. And so that's what you're seeing here as far as what is it and how you convey that to your students in terms of that writing process is a time to practice and develop as writers. So again, I like the resource. It even has a couple of little, you know, these things that you would expect to see up in teachers classrooms for students to refer to. And the important piece here to look at are the different steps of the writing process that you would work through each one in writer's workshop and the length of time and um, the amount of work you do in each one certainly depends on the group and the different expectations you have at that time. So sometimes some of the areas might take longer and sometimes they go faster just depending on how the students are working. And you see they have all these neat resources because it's almost like the students would have their own little writer's workshop folders. Remember, it's all about independence and about our students being able to, you know, even within their writer's workshop groups, being able to work independently together to move forward. And so having something in your classroom where it said on um, what step you're on, you know, this one on this side is showing different, these are like brainstorming topics, so a way, different ideas that they can pull from. And so you would, uh, you know, you might have a student, that, that might be an anchor chart or it might be something that's in a personal writing folder that you ask students to pull out when you're in that component of the less, of the writing process. And so it really gives a lot of different ideas for each area. And I do want you to take more time with this resource, but the one that we're looking at in particular today is actually drafting and revising because we're kind of working through these quickly to get to where we can be to where we're at our final copy before next week. And so the thing, um, you know, and even ourselves as adult writers and who have engaged in some form of the writing process at some, you know, different times in our education careers, journeys, 
you know, we might not be familiar with each step and what the expectations and the characteristics are of each component because really drafting and revising and even editing might sound very much the same to a lot of us. And so we really want, you know, ourselves to get an understanding of that and in turn for our students to understand those, the differences. And the reason being because we want our young authors to know, I'm not just gonna come up with ideas and do a quick fit, you know, re revision and be done and ready to publish. We want them to understand it's a process, it's a long process, and there's things that you do within each steps of the process to be able to say that we're at that final point of publication. And so it's this understanding as writers that, okay, I have a great idea, I've developed a nice story, but it still has a lot of work I have to do on it. And that's about where you all are right now. You know, you have a draft, and some of you might say, it's really good. This is what I used in my summer camp, so it's pretty fully developed. But the, we want to do a little shift in that mindset to say, wait a second, if I'm in the draft of my writing piece, what can I expect to be doing next in my writing? And it's not, will I have changes to make, or maybe it'll be just fine and I can publish it. The idea is in drafting, we're changing what you wrote. We're adding to it and we're revising it. And so we need to understand that. And that helps us as writers to say, okay, it, it's not gonna be finished in the first time that I write it. I might really like it, but I'm gonna have some work to do with it through this process. And so drafting again, just like you would see in these different visuals, that's look how cool for a student to put that up when they're starting with the writing process, an individual folder to say, where am I at? Which, uh, what am I working on, my ideas, things like that to include. But when we're talking about drafting, a couple of the characteristics that you would expect for your students to understand is within the writing journal when you're drafting, and this is really like if you're doing a handwritten journal, that you skip lines on the draft. You know, the brainstorming is different. Then you go to the draft and there's actually lines, like a double space, you know, in your journal. The reason being, it's gonna be helpful for when you get to the next two steps, revising and editing. And so even though, you know, we don't really do that as we're typing in our digital journals, the idea is when we're handwriting, we're leaving space because we know we're getting that feedback and we wanna have space to get that feedback. So even though it says the drafting stage is just a sloppy copy, write freely and do not worry too much about the structure, neatness, or illustrations. So that's probably what a lot of you have, maybe just some bulleted notes, maybe just some ideas, maybe it's more developed than that. But if you're really following the characteristics of the drafting, it is a sloppy copy, it's not all structurally correct, but you have one, skipped lines, and two, you have developed your beginning, middle, and end of the topic. So even in a draft, you still should show, I understand there's a sequence of events in my story. <clears throat> and maybe you did or didn't do that for your draft today. This is again, just a review of what you would want your students to understand in this component. And then th this is actually a teacher website, like a blog. And so she actually speaks about how she does things with her class. Um, start on a fresh piece of paper, think aloud on my topic. And this is all the way, ways to show as a demonstration for how to create that draft. Okay, so guys, ideally where you all are, that you all have your sloppy and you're ready to share that in your writer's workshop groups, understanding that it's not fully developed and there's still a lot of work to do on it. And so tonight, actually I'm going to put you just with a partner because you're gonna do review together just one-on-one -on -one with looking at one another's drafts. And the idea is we're gonna do something different from what you would do with your elementary students or even middle school students. It's kind of to meld in drafting and revising into tonight's work so that you're ready to go into editing. And so what happens in revising, so guys in drafting, that's whenever you're just showing, okay, here's my ideas, give me some ideas for adding to it and editing and you know elaborating. 
And then we get into that revision piece. And you do see they're pretty closely related. But now in revision is when we start adding things to the story. Now we might remove a sentence because it doesn't make sense or add, you know, where you might cut and paste things to different parts of the story because it aligns better. And now you're really, you're getting into those last steps in revising. And so two of the big things that you're doing in that stage is reworking the lead of your story as well as adding to the conclusions of your story. And so in the revision process is when you're really getting it more into a copy that looks about the way that you want it. And then editing is just the flat out now on proofreading your work. Okay, so now we're not adding and taking away parts of the story, we're just proofreading. And so to in your writer's workshop tonight, like I said, you're just going to be with one person and it's just going to be a random partner. If we were together in class, I would say in your writer's workshop group, just pair off. But it's just going to be easier for me to randomly join you up with somebody. But one, you should have your, um, your drafts in your digital journals. And so it's just a matter of going into that. I, I can post the link real quick just so we don't have to go back and find it. Um, go into each other's journals and read each other's drafts first. But then, guys, I wanted to show you the idea of how we think about adding that introduction and how we think about adding that um, conclusion. And this is a cute little, and it's pretty fast too, so I'm going to go ahead and share this video. But first, I need to make sure I'm sharing my sound here. What questions or comments do you have while I'm doing this about these different pieces of the writing process? So it had to be a personal narrative? It did not. I was going to point that out. This is just an example and we'll make it, um, we'll, we'll show how it can go across the information. Going okay. Across. Yeah, because I, I ended up making a poem. That's fine. But you'll still have some revising and it's still the same idea of how am I opening it and how am I closing it. So. Okay little clip is just going to give us some ideas on how to do that, even though yours might be not be in the same genre. Okay, other questions? Comments? Okay, so then let's watch this. It's a quick one just about writing a personal narrative. Episode three, writing an introduction. A personal narrative is a true story about your life. You write about something that has happened to you. An introduction is the first few sentences of your story. It can also be called the opening or the lead. We write introductions to hook the reader. We want the person reading our story to be interested and excited to read more. There are a lot of different ways you can hook a reader. I'm going to show you four different ways. The first way you could hook a reader is to start your story with a sound. These are called onomatopoeias. For example, you might start your story by writing, boom, I heard a loud crash in my house. The reader would wonder, hmm, I wonder what that crash was all about they would be interested to read the rest of your story. Another way you could hook the reader is by starting your story with talking. This is called dialogue. For example, you could start by writing, go away, I told my brother. The reader would probably want to read more to find out what your brother was doing. You could also start your story by asking the reader a question. For example, you could ask, have you ever been to a water park? This would help the reader make a personal connection to your story. People are more likely to like stories that they can relate to. And last, you could start your story by describing the setting. The setting is where and when your story happens. For example, you might write, about how to start 
my story. The story I am writing is about getting a new dog. I think I want to start my story with a question. I'm going to write, have you ever felt so happy you could cry? That's how I felt last summer when my mom told me I could get a dog. I had wanted a dog for so long, I couldn't believe I was finally going to get one. Hopefully, people will read the introduction to my story and they will be hooked. They will want to read more. That's it. Check out episode four to see how I write a draft of the rest of my story. Okay, so just like we talked about, you know, it's all about the hook at the beginning. And the other thing I wanted to point out were the different types of openings that she mentioned in the quick little video. And so when you're visiting with your partners today and you have a chance to review and then you're starting to talk about the revisions that you'll make, um, at, talk about what type of opening you think would be appropriate. And now this is where I was gonna mention you might not have done a narrative, even if it's a poem or a um, nonfiction story, you still have to have a way to hook the reader at the beginning of the poem or the story or the biography, whatever it is. <clears throat> so in, in that way, you're still revising and you're still adding an opening, even if it just changed, even if it's just the first line of your poem. And the same thing is now you want to think about the closing. And so let's look at this quick little video and think about the different ways that you might conclude your writing, because that's going to be your big tasks is what are you going to revise, how are you, will you revise your writing for the opening and the closing. Writing a personal narrative. Episode five, writing a closing. A personal narrative is a true story about your life. You write about something that has happened to you. A closing is the very end of your story. It's also called a conclusion. We write closings to wrap up our story. We want our writing to sound finished. We also want to remind the reader of the main idea of our story. There are many ways to end a story. Here are a few ideas. You can rephrase your opening. You could tell your feelings about what happened. You might describe what you learned. You can give a hope about the future, or you could give the reader an update. Now let's look at each of those ideas a little more closely. You can rephrase your opening. This helps remind the reader of the main idea of your story. It's important to not use the same exact sentences as your opening though because that would be boring. You want to say it with different words. For example, if your opening said, have you ever been to the zoo? I had a blast at the zoo this weekend. Your closing might say, my trip to the zoo was so awesome. Don't you want to visit the zoo now? I reminded the reader that my whole story was about how fun my trip to the zoo was, but I said it in a different way. Another way you could end your story is to tell your feelings about what happened. For example, if your story is about getting a new toy at the store, your ending might say, I love my new toy so much. I can't wait to play with it even more. This ending is way more exciting than just saying, last I got home and played with my toy. To end your story, you could also tell a lesson you learned from your experience. For example, if your story is about a time you slipped on ice and broke your arm, your closing might say, next time it snows, I will definitely be on the lookout for slippery ice. That sounds a lot better than just ending with, then I went home from the hospital. Another option is to end your story with something that you hope will happen in the future. If your story is about going to the swimming pool, your closing could say, I hope I can go back to the pool again before the weather gets cold. Lastly, if you're writing about something that happened a long time ago, you might give the reader an update. For example, 
If you write about the day your baby's sister was born, your closing might say, now my baby sister is two years old. She gets cuter and cuter every day. Now I'm going to write my closing. Here's the personal narrative I've already written about the Oh, shit. Writing. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Okay, so we'll just see. Of my own. I was so happy. Next, I'm going to update the reader about what my dog is like now. I will write, Now I've had my dog for two months, and he is a really great pet. I think he is the <coughs> best dog in the world. That's it. The draft of my personal narrative is complete. Check out Okay. Okay, guys, so you can actually see this is a cute little series that really goes through each step of the writing process. So as you get access to this um, set power, uh, the Google Slides, which they are, I'll make them available in a minute, you know, you'll be able to go to the actual video if you wanted to check out the other ones for more details. But what I wanted to focus on for our purposes was the idea of adding that beginning, the hook at the beginning and the closing at the end. And both of the videos had like different types of openings and different types of closings. And so as you're in your with your partners, I want you to be able to kind of discuss what type of opening do you feel is most appropriate? What type of closing should I put in there? So that that's something that you have at the forefront of your mind when it comes to your next step to revise your paper. So that's okay. I kind of got ahead of myself. You're about to get with your partner and this is basically the steps, you know, in your discussion again and again, um, we're not going to, you're not going to turn anything in from your discussion. The real feedback that you need to get is getting these ideas from one another so that you can then revise. So guys, look at through, through these directions. I want to point out a couple of things. Um, like I said, I'm just going to match you up with a partner. You'll go into a breakout room, just two of you. And I think the first thing to do is go into our Google folder with our writer's notebooks and look into your partner's folder and uh, um, notebook and read their draft. So it might just be a couple of minutes of just reading quietly first. Um, and then talk to each other with the feedback specific to your drafts. What do you like and where do you think there is a good place for more detail or revision? And then think about what we just watched and what we just talked about and discuss the opening and the closing. What type of opening and closing do you now suggest? And here's the key guys. Um, I, I need to put that in bold. So between now and next week, with this same partner, guys, I want you to, what you'll do after you finish up this after this evening is actually now revise based on the discussion that you had. And then I want you to send that revised work to your partner for final editing. And then they send it back to you and you get your final copy ready for next week's class. And so together in your group, you might say, okay, let's send each other our revised work by Friday. Or you might say, send it to me by tomorrow. You guys together decide when you're gonna do that. And then the, the only thing that, the only part that matters is by next week you have talked to each other and you have your final uh, editing piece done in your, digital, in your digital writer's journal. And so any work you're doing, any kind of revising, it all goes in that notebook, in your digital writer's notebook and that's where your final copy will then be. But you do want to, even if it's a cut and paste, you might make a title page of draft with what you have for tonight, and then your revision that you're gonna share again with your partner, and then you might have your final copy. So all three of those where I'm able to see those on your digital journal. Okay, so this is the discussion that you will have together. And so what I'm gonna do is, stop this and make it where I can share it with you so you can all see this and get to the, and, and, and I'll also share the, um, sorry, the digital journal um, link. Okay, guys, so now what questions do you have as I'm getting that shared and I'll get you guys into groups? Okay, does that make sense? So now what I wanna say is if you don't have your draft ready, then 
maybe send me a private message in the chat so I don't put you into a group with a partner. And then you can use this time to actually be working on that. I mean, of course, the expectation is that it's done, but if it's not, then just go ahead and tell me so that you're not, you, uh, so that everybody gets with a partner that has theirs together. So right now what I'm doing is going to share the dry this link. This is at a link. Okay. Don't put me in there with nobody. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I was able to get something together. So, um, okay. Well, you know, you know we're, what I'm right talking about. We're talking technician. about the, we're writing the writing draft, not about the presentation. You know that, right? Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Okay. So now I'm going back to our Zoomer. Here we are. Here's the link to the, okay. Everybody, I'm sending you the link to the, Google Slides, because that'll give you access to that PowerPoint or the what you just saw. Um, and then I'm going to give the link to the Google Drive folder with our writing in there to make sure everybody can quickly find that. So guys, jump in if there's questions. This is going to take me just a second. You know how this goes for me. I'm having to go back. I'll see what you're going to be talking about in your groups. Uh, Dr. Rodriguez, Ch Chaney just wrote and said her internet crashed. So she's mm -hmm. had to, so she's not on here right now. I'm back. Okay, Thank thanks you. for the message. Oh, okay. <laughs> it came back up. Oh, did she make it in? Yeah, yeah she's back. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, good. Dr. Rodriguez, this is Veronica. Did okay. you get my message? I don't, I'll check here in a second. I mean, is okay. Now in the chat or did you send me something an email? Uh, well, both. I'm picking up my dad right now, so I'm not at my computer to where I can uh, share anything with anybody. Okay, so that was Veronica? Yes. Okay, then give me a second. I'm going to make sure that if you're not ready that right now you this is your time to be working on that and then Thank you. Like I said, guys, it, it doesn't have to be I'm going to put you in even if you even if you're saying that it's not all the way because that's that's kind of what a draft is your sloppy copy. Um, now, so now a couple of you have said it's not ready at all, but some of you saying it's not all I've started it or it's not all the way then I'm still going to put you know um, if you have ideas if you have some things there then talk to each other because that way at least you get this um, discussion done and you have your partner to revise with. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. So um, I've got about three of you that are, or I think there's four that are going to not join. And so I'll put everybody else in. So now I'm going to make our breakout rooms slowly but surely getting it all done. There we go. Okay. Do a bunch of rooms to make it be two in each. Okay. And so guys, just don't join up. That's what I should say. Just don't join up. And then if I see you don't have a partner, I'll move some people around. That's the way it's going to work. Okay, so you should now see your group and you'll either have two or three in there, um, just based on the numbers that we have tonight. And I'll send out a message here probably in about 20, 25 minutes. See how we're doing. Professor, um, I don't know if there's a bad connection with my partner, but she, I can't hear her. Okay, let me see. Who is your partner? I can send her a message. Karen. Okay. Hello? Oh, she's here. Okay, good. Um, Karen, was there something wrong with your connection or she couldn't hear you?
are you muted, Karen? I don't think we can hear you. Oh, she said her mic isn't working. Oh, sheesh. Okay, so are you, um, I guess the only way to do it is if you're wanting to exchange or are you not wanting to join in? She said she has to restart her computer. Oh, okay, thank you, Angelique. I'm glad you're getting the message. <laughs> Okay, it's telling. Okay, well then restart it and then we'll have you join up then. Okay. And okay. Professor, I know that we're not talking about the presentations, but I just kind of finished up mine. The only reason why I was concerned is because there was no link for my um for my interactive project. I was it's just a picture of it and I was just gonna explain to the class what you know what it is. It's a seesaw. But okay, good. Okay. Well, you're going to see the way that I'm, um, the way that you're going to review it is that you have your, we're basically going to, you're going to choose four different ones to review. And so what you might do is put a note on your presentation. So whoever reviews it sees, you know, the link, of what you're asking them to do. Okay. Okay. So it'll clarify. Well, maybe to, well, well, okay. So if we present tonight, I'll just explain to the class, but then like, Tonight, I'll go back and add a link so whoever's reviewing it for the thing could actually press it, maybe. Okay. Is that cool? Yeah, that's okay. fine. So just remind me there that you need just a second to share, and that way they know. It might just be just don't review mine until something, and that way you get okay, the cool. link. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, guys, so now let me see. I've got to get Karen back assigned over to. Can you hear me now? Yes. I yes. That worked. Okay, cool. <laughs> I just so use I'll my earphones instead. <laughs> okay, yeah, who knows why sometimes it works. Okay, you should both be able to go back into five. Okay, thank you. Okay.